Hey everyone, Alex here with Bandsaw Live. Today I'm here with Dan Moody. We normally would be messing with bandsaws, but since we're actually showing you how to use the CNC, probably better we have a professional do it. Nothing happens in this shop that Dan hasn't touched electronically, um, and nobody gets to watch it without Troy. So uh, they are definitely uh, one of the great reasons for bandsaw life. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take my logo. Um, we've already scanned it in, and uh, Dan's gonna show you how to take that PDF or uh, image and turn it into what you see right here. Dan? Thanks, Alex. Let's take it away with starting with uh, loading everything up into vCarve and converting this into a tool path that we can use on our CNC. We have vCarve Pro loaded. We're going to select create a new file to start a new project. We're going to define our material as two inches by two inches by three quarter inch. We're then going to select a Z zero position of the material surface. That means when we zero the tip of our tool, we can zero it to the top of our part. So if we have slight variations in the thickness of our part, well, the, the thicknesses of our stock, we can adjust for that at the CNC. We're then going to select our XY datum position to be the center. That way we can center our logo uh, on our stock. It's, I often find this is an easier way of uh, placing the logo. We're then going to click OK. And this is uh, a new fresh project. So from here, we need to import our image. So we're going to go to the top left, click File, Import, Import Bitmap. This is our logo that we'll be putting onto our stock. From here, we have the image loaded into our project, but we still we now need to create vectors. So under Create Vectors, we're going to select trace bitmap. This is going to select the dark regions of our image and create vectors in our project for those dark regions. By doing this, we can then take those vectors and convert them to tool paths. So with our image selected, we're going to use all the default settings and click preview. These are the vectors that vCarve has selected from our image. Uh, if you're unhappy with these vectors, you can always mess around with the sliders and click preview again to perhaps select darker or lighter regions of the image. I'm happy with this, so I'm going to click apply. Now from here, we have our vectors. We can see them selected in pink. We're going to go to Tool Paths and select VCarve Engraving Toolpath. And this is how we convert the vectors in our project to the actual operations that the machine will perform to cut those vectors out. We're going to start with the default cut depth. Our bit is already selected as a 90 degree half inch bit. If you need to change that, you can just click select over here, and that will bring up a list of various bits. Ours is already selected, so we're going to click OK. We are then going to click Calculate. This is what generates the actual path that the tool is going to take. So here we see uh, the various entrances and exits. So blue. In this preview is the tool cutting out of material. Green is entering and exiting the material, and red is uh, the tool moving above the part. We can now preview this tool path by selecting the tool path here and clicking Preview Selected Tool Path. This shows us what the machine expects to do. If we are happy with this, we can then go to Toolpaths again, 
Uh, we're currently still on the preview toolpath menu, so we're going to close that out. We're going to select the toolpath that we want to export, and we're going to click Save Toolpath. This is what converts the toolpath to an MMG file that our CNC can understand and use to actually cut out the um, cut out this part. So we're going to click Save Toolpaths and save it with a name that we can then find later. Now that we've exported our MMG file, we need to copy it to a flash drive that we can attach to our CNC. So we, I've navigated to our downloads folder. I have the Bandsaw Life logo MMG file that we just created, selected. I'm going to then just drag it to our flash drive. This will place a file that I placed on here previously. Once that file is uh, loaded on our flash drive, we can see that it is, uh, it is present on the drive. We're going to then eject the drive and plug it into our CNC. So now we're going to show you how to set up the CNC for cutting out the toolpath. First, we're going to set the Z height of the part. So this lets us determine the top surface of our stock. We're going to first show you how to do that with the tool touch up puck. So basically take the puck, place it underneath the bit and click cl tool set. This will lower the bit until it makes contact with the puck. And now it knows the exact top of the part. Now, so now if you don't have a tool touch up puck or if your touch up puck is broken, you can use a half inch end mill to set the Z height instead. What you do is you take the uh, the bit and lower it down until you can't roll the end mill underneath. So see the end mill here doesn't slide underneath. So now we're going to slowly raise the bit until the bit can, well, until the end mill can pass underneath the bit. Once the end mill can pass under the bit, we know the bit is exactly half an inch above the t the work surface. So now we can bring the bit over to the side, uh, lower it down by half an inch, and it'll be exactly at the height of the work surface. You see, we'll just bring it over to the side of the part so we don't accidentally stab it into the part. I'm gonna bring it down half an inch. And then we're gonna click Z0, and this is setting the and this, this is telling the machine that that's the top of our work surface. Now we're going to set the XY location. So this is going to be our XY datum that we set up in VCarve. Uh, and as, you, as I said, when we were setting up VCarve, this is going to be the center of the logo. So we're going to just kind of just center it on our stock. Once we're at a happy starting location, we'll hit X, Y, zero. And now as a last safety precaution, we're going to actually run the whole tooth path in the air. So we're gonna actually raise it up by a couple inches. This, and then we're gonna set the Z zero to be above. This is so we can make sure we're not running into any of the clamps. Okay, so now we've set our new Z0 to be a couple inches above the part. We're going to go ahead and select our toolpath and we're going to run it. And this will run it in the air. While this is running, we're watching to make sure that the CNC would not collide with any of the clamps and that it's in the location that we want on the part. Right, now that we're happy, we're going to reset the Z0 and run it in the stock.